Sharon. Um, obviously, this change to the rewards program may be just kind of taking a little bit of, of pricing by Starbucks um, in a less visible way. I know that's not core to your, your thesis, but how does it fit in with your general view of, uh, of why you like Starbucks? Yes, I think there are a lot of things to like about Starbucks right now. You know, we've got what you just referred to, which is the loyalty program change, um, which is not what we had anticipated, but should help gross margins. But really what we like the most about Starbucks is the momentum they have in their business. Uh, we are seeing continued strong traffic trends star at Starbucks, really globally, with the exception of China. And now with China starting to ease, we're expecting China to now accelerate as well. So really positive traffic momentum at Starbucks. And that ought to lead to pricing power, uh, which we've seen them execute. And we expect them to continue to execute, as you alluded to, in part through this uh, loyalty program change. And how does the, the valuation stack up of a Starbucks? So many growth stocks have really suffered valuation compression. I guess Starbucks is, is off the highs, but what do you think is already built in uh, to the stock in terms of you know, further anticipated growth? Yeah, sure. So I think the company really surprised people with their outlook that they gave in September, looking for acceleration across the board. And with that outlook, where they're looking for accelerated earnings growth, accelerated comp growth, accelerated unit expansion, we have seen the multiple come back up. And the multiple is more or less in line with where it's been historically over time. Uh, but we think we're going to see upside to expectations. We think we're going to see this company grow at a 15 to 20 percent bottom line clip. And I think, you know, as you look across the broader large cap landscape, there aren't too many companies where you can have good clarity on growing the bottom line at 15 to 20 percent. We think Starbucks is in there and we think they have more control over their own destiny right now than a lot of other consumer names. And you do cover a, a pretty broad uh, selection of consumer related stocks. What's your general view of, of how things will hold up in aggregate next year for U.S. consumers? Yeah, I mean, I've actually been really surprised about how things have held up in 2022. Um, you know, the consumer has thrown a lot of curveballs this year, and we've generally seen consumer spending hold up pretty well. I think as we look out to 23, uh, certainly rates are having an impact or will have an impact, but inflation is coming down. I think the key wild card is unemployment. If unemployment can stay 5% or lower, I think we have a good chance that the consumer hanging in pretty well in 2023, maybe better than the streets currently anticipating. Uh, I was interested in, uh, in another one of your top picks for the year, which is Planet Fitness. Um, again, one that uh, w was viewed, I guess it got swung around by pandemic dynamics, but uh, how is it positioned right now? Yeah, sure. So we were all supposed to be on Pelotons and never going to fitness clubs, right? I mean, that was the 2020 thesis that many held. And what we've seen the consumer largely do in 2022 is go back to what they were doing in 2019. That includes going back to fitness clubs. So we've seen Planet really recover the vast majority of its fitness club usage. Uh, and we've seen, this is consistent with Starbucks as well, really cross-generational appeal and more appeal the younger the consumer is. So it might surprise you, but 9% of all millennials and Gen Z already belong to a Planet Fitness. And that's a nice tailwind as we continue to see more generations come into the fitness club arena. I also like that Planet has this $10 entry price point, which today, I don't know what you can buy for $10 other than you know a monthly subscription uh, to Planet. And that is encouraging and that, that should be fairly recession resilient. We look back at the Great Recession, Planet Fitness comp double digits the entire time.